that's, that's something that takes a lot of practice and, all, and also to be in a place of leadership because if you transition that whole that whole same pattern that you described. I follow this Instagram page called Law of Attraction and it's a very like positive like mindset. Right. You know, different perspective on Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> and welcome to episode 8 of Fuck Your Podcast. I'm Emma Pardo. And I'm Katie Martin. And on today's podcast, we are talking about, uh, this is a mindset podcast, but we're calling it Get Over Yourself. Like how you can overcome self-doubt. Something that we all um, we all experience in not only business, but our personal lives. So we have a few examples of that. Yeah. So, so funny story, we kind of merged two podcast topics together. Um, but the Get Over Yourself is something that I've thought about for a while, probably for like the last four years. And as the, as I've journaled and things, it's likely going to turn into a book. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Yeah. Just like where you beat yourself up and uh, like the, the self doubt, how that gets in there and prevents you from doing things that are really awesome or things that you should be doing. Yes. Um, just believing in yourself in general. Yeah. That's something that I'm struggling with lately. I struggle with it more than I don't struggle with it and that's something that i would like to change it's hard especially at my age because i am i'm almost 25 and being in the position that i'm in i have a lot of self-doubt because i i myself feel as others doubt me because of my age mm -hmm. so it's easy to slip into the mindset of like I'm not either good enough or smart enough or experienced enough. And there's there's some things right. that I am not experienced enough in or have all the knowledge of. But there's a lot of things that I do have the experience and knowledge in that I still doubt myself on. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to like I don't want to call it imposter syndrome. Like it's just a serious questioning of my existence sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And that that goes in you know, work mm -hmm. or in like how I personally view myself. Like right now, another thing that I'm really struggling with is that I'm up a little bit with uh, my weight, especially working from home because it's easy to fall into that and uh, not working out as much and not moving and getting up and going for the day. And I pat myself on the back because I do get ready most days, six out of seven days a week. I would, like put myself together um, right. before getting anything done with, you know, work at home. But yeah, the weight has been put on and I'm like at my heaviest right now. And it seems like impossible to get off. So I'm just like, sometimes I'm like, I'm just fat and I'm going to have to deal with it. Like, get over it, you know, like this is who you are now. And that's because I just doubt that I'll lose the weight, you know. So that's another thing. That's yeah, I got to get that self-doubt out of the way. The term get over yourself kind of, I don't know, you used to hear it like a long time ago. I remember hearing it as a kid, um, mm -hmm. but a lot of it, it actually stemmed from, it stemmed from people who thought they were more important than what they are. But the way that I view get over yourself is like the second part where you have people that are complaining, but usually it's those internal, like I look at it as like those internal complaints and disbeliefs about myself. Like you talked about like, well, this is just who I am now. Like I'm, I can't get the weight off or I can't do that. I'm not experienced enough or I can't do that because I'm a woman or I can't do that because because, you know, like you, you, you have those thoughts that go through your head where there's been times where I'm just like, fucking get over yourself. Like I'm telling myself that, like, right. like get out of your own way. And that's, everybody experiences that no matter, mm -hmm. no matter what, it's just like learning, learning some tools and techniques that can get you out of your own way. Cause right. at the end of the day, in most cases we're we are our own worst enemy and we, every single person I think on the planet will self-sabotage to some level. There are people, right. there are people out there who have a pattern of doing it way more catastrophic than others, but I think even in small in in small instances, you know, we we self sabotage when we just lack that self confidence, right? So coming from like definitely a different place, like where you and I coming from two different places, like I I have a little more years behind me, so and a little more from a from a wisdom standpoint because wisdom comes from experience, mm -hmm. but you even with where you are and evolving out of college and into the space that you're in what are some of them again we're not perfect it still happens right mm -hmm. so what are some of the things that you've implemented or practiced or things that you've learned that kind of help you get over yourself when you need to oh that's a good question i don't know it does help um like having crew here you know 50 percent of the time because it's like i realize that i set the example for someone that is watching me 
you know, that's like in my own home. It's not just, you know, what I put out on the internet or what's what's seen by friends or family. This is like someone that's absorbing everything that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it was a trend for a while on TikTok, but it was like when I'm looking at myself in the mirror and saying bad things about this person, like I also have to think I'm saying bad things about me when I was five, right? Like stuff like that. Like if I wouldn't say it to my younger self at five years old, why am I saying it to myself now? Exactly. And like it relates to that because crew, well, he's five. And like if he's seeing how I react to things and how I'm like doubting everything or coming up with an excuse for everything because I'm like protecting my own self from my own self kind right. of deal. Um, like he picks up on that mm, and he knows yeah. he's so smart. And it, I mean, any kid at that age, they absorb it all and they see how we react to things. And it's just going to become a trait that he learns down the road. And that's something that I don't want him to learn, you know? Like yeah. I want him to, to go with confidence in everything that he does. Right. So. You know, because that teeters on the line of like self-deprecation, you know, you can't like, depending on what you vocalize and talk about yourself or talking about yourself in a bad way, kids see all of that. They mm -hmm. don't, they don't always do it, but they see it. Like they, they, they hear it. They, they, they learn. And it sticks. It sticks yeah. for a long time. That's a huge differentiator is do, like when you're living by yourself and you're just responsible for yourself and now you're setting an example for someone else and also that's something that is that's, that's something that takes a lot of practice and all and also to be in a place of leadership because if you transition that whole that whole same pattern that you described with crew take that into the workplace if you right well if you have if you lead employees a yeah. group of people if you lead employees and you there and there's nothing wrong with being a little bit vulnerable like there's nothing wrong with saying hey i'm 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 having a bad day and i'm kind of putting a pin in that right now we got to work on this thing and and move forward mm -hmm. there's there's nothing wrong with letting them see a little bit of that vulnerable vulnerability but a lot of times they could question whether or not you're making good decisions based on how you feel about yourself. Like there's gotta be that level of confidence that comes in and says, I'm confident in what I can help you with mm -hmm. and support you. So then that way they can go and do their work with that level of confidence, knowing that they have support and that they have, you know, somebody in the right mindset as their leader. Right. But for human, like it's not, <laughs> it's not perfect. No, no. And, and, and you overall you're looking for, you know, you're looking for consistency, not perfection, like to where mm -hmm. you're winning six out of the seven days of the week or, you know, seven and a half out of the eight hours of the day or, or whatever that looks like. But that's a huge mindset shift, you know, right. at the end of the day. So that takes a lot of practice. And I used to, th <laughs> I used to think affirmations were really cheesy. No, I love them. I love but, them. I actually yeah. have an app on my phone that gives me affirmation reminders right. and um, you can choose how many times throughout the day. I think it's called mm -hmm. I am. I, when I was I a lot younger, I thought they were really cheesy, but there's something that's powerful in the, uh, in, in the English language of just repeating something over and over and over. And that's, the, yep, there you go. But if you think about it, it's these things that these things can be learned, like right. changing your mindset can happen with action and tools right? You can, the, another one of our podcast topics was, can leaders be developed? Of course they can, because you yeah. can teach them the techniques that make for a strong leader where people will follow you. Like it does, it's not all just something it's either in your DNA or it's not like right. there are definitely things that can be developed. And there's something powerful with uh, repetition, you mm -hmm. know? Oh man, that reminds me. I wrote something down from a podcast today. Hold on. It was a podcast I was listening to. Give it a shout uh, out. Okay. Give it a shout out. You can do it. It was uh, it was Ed Milet's podcast. Okay, so we love Ed he Milet. was talking about um, the difference between like mastering something, like mastering a skill, mastering different things in business. But it's repetition and awareness mm -hmm. is what will make the different make a difference between something becoming mechanical versus natural. And that could totally apply not for just a learned skill, like something you didn't know how to do yesterday, but you now know how to do today. Mm -hmm. That could definitely be applied to your mindset. Hundred percent. Because yeah. if you are if you have a significant amount of self doubt, just use affirmations as an example. Like doing those things over and over and over where you're repeating and you're aware of either the feeling or the change that it's starting to make. Right. So you're doing something over and over and over and you got to, and the awareness is like the feedback that you're getting. So, um, you know, take, if you, if you compare that to a skill, if you're learning a new skill and you're doing it over and over, you might have a coach or you might have somebody where you go back and you look at it. Or if you're an athlete, you go back and look at the tape. 
But when you're talking about mindset, you have to really step back and say, okay, you know, this situation happened. How would I have handled that differently 30 days ago? Right. Before I started practicing these tools. And, but that, that thing could be like what he talked about repetition, you know, repetition and awareness mm -hmm. over and over and over is what will take you from doing something that's just um, something mechanical to something that's natural. And you want right. to be natural. Again, um, the, the whole get over yourself thing too. I think I got inspired by that topic um, after again, one of my favorite books, uh, Loving What Is by uh, Byron Katie. I always recommend people read that, especially if you notice that you get upset and I, I don't like using the word triggered, but there it's usually a trigger in there where everything triggers an emotion in you. That's and, where I'm at right and now. You're, and you're constantly <laughs> unhappy. Yeah. Like, because although people don't like to hear it, you are a hundred percent control in, of your emotions. Mm -hmm. Something that someone else does, it may not have any intent nor directed at you. How you feel about it is what you choose. It's right. hundred percent what you choose. Now, there's a difference. You know, there are people that can do very specific things that do hurt or they might do it with the intent to hurt. You know, when mm -hmm. you talk about kids and other kids being mean and things like that. But in most cases, especially as adults <laughs> and especially in complex relationships, most of that shit's in our head. Right. So a lot of the whole get over yourself starts with you getting over what someone else did and how you feel about it. Like mm -hmm. you, how you feel about it's really probably irrelevant to the situation. Probably has no bearing on whether or not you just have to accept that it is and you get to choose how you feel about it. I think, and a huge part of my personal self-development was that where I have a choice to say that what this person did over here has anything to do with me or not. And in most cases it doesn't. Right. So frustration's a choice. Anger's a choice. Happiness is a choice. I would prefer to choose to be happy. Right. So, and I want to like go back a little bit to what you said um, with the Ed Milet stuff. So, someone in my life that's really good about this is Cole, actually. Mm -hmm. um, he, and I've been noticing it more, not in Cole, just like in other people. Being at Disney, mm -hmm. he, he's been saying to me, you know, if you speak it, something's going to happen. It's going to gravitate towards whatever it is. You know, so if you're speaking positive, you're going to gravitate towards positive. If you're speaking negative, you're going to gravitate towards the negative. Right. And we went to Disney mm -hmm. and there's the the families out there that have shirts that they think are funny, like hashtag broke. Hash, you know, like I'm, you know, this is the most expensive trip ever. I'm broke because of this, blah, 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 because Disney's right. expensive. Cole's like, see, why would you ever do that? You're just joke or not it's written all over you now yep. you're speaking it and it's it's gonna have that effect on you eventually mm -hmm. and i catch myself sometimes sometimes i'm working on it i have a whole journey to go through like everybody <laughs> else does but when i'm having those like times of self-doubt where i'm like i'll never lose the weight or i'll never do this or i'll never do that and and talking to cole about like business ideas going like maybe i should do this but i da 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 da, da and list of right. reasons why i shouldn't it's not only an excuse but i'm speaking that into existence so right. it's like oh i'll never have time for that okay well that's an excuse i'm also speaking to existence that i'll never have time for it and mm -hmm. if i really want to make the time i'm going to make the time and i have to keep repeating that to myself that i'm going to make the time mm -hmm. so and i'm not going into detail on them cuz i don't want to speak on them for cole's behalf but he goes like every morning and writes them down mm -hmm. he will physically write them down in his notebook and that's what he does whether it's it's obviously all good but whether it's a big positive or a little positive it's still in the direction of being positive yeah so he writes all that stuff down and that's his manifesting right basically. and i believe in manifesting 100 percent. i think yeah. that if you speak it into existence, it will happen. So that and like that's that whole thing of what you put into the universe comes back to you. So it's kind of the same same principles. Um, which that's that's something that I believe in. Like I I believe in karma. And again, manifestation is is very positive. It's not <laughs> there's there's work behind it. But I think the difference too, like there's a difference between having the vision board on the wall and going, "Yep, I'm gonna have that someday," versus the manifestation is changing your mindset, right? Like going through those steps every single day, because like you said, um, even, and I would like, even just with what you said, I caught a little flaw in there where you, you, what you just said, um, I I'm never going to have time for that. And you said, well, I could make time for that. 
So instead of saying, I could make time for that, you say, it's, I, I am will. going to make I'm, time for that. Yes. I will make time for that. Or you just having say, that definite, sorry. Yeah, yes. Yeah. You know what I mean though? Right. Right. But it's just that different, like the difference of saying, I'm never going to have time for that. And knowing that it could be a struggle, it could be a challenge. Like the, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's about changing your priorities and making some decisions, but physically saying, I have time for that. Right. Like just saying, I, I do have time for that. Right. So let's make that work. When it comes to like the the negative self talk, it all it all goes through our head. Mm -hmm. you know? Even if it's just like I'm too tired today, I don't feel well today. But I mean, do you? But is it like you really got to look at it? Do you, do you really not feel well? Or you know, do you are you really too tired? Like people do things when they're tired, and you got to do them in spite of it. Or but the biggest thing is thinking to yourself that I could never do that, or I could right. never have that, or I did this thing, I got this result that wasn't good enough and good enough based on whose standards. And, and if it's not good enough based on your standards, you have the ability to. Or if you think that it's not good enough based on someone else's standards, you can't internalize that and say, okay, now everything that I do is never going to be good enough. So right. that's those are all things that are constantly, constantly against you when they don't have to be. Right. So, and it's not something that's, again, it's not something that's perfect. It's something you have to work on, you know, work on all of the time. But yeah, I thought, I used to think that the, like the affirmations, the manifestation was silly until somebody explained it to me in some different context and where it really started to change the way, change the way that you think. Right. Exactly. So, and that's how yeah. you know the difference that it's working. Like, how would I have handled that? Like, this major fucking thing happened and I would have lost my mind like two years ago, a year ago, six months ago. And it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't take that much time for some of those things to start working. Right. Yeah. That's something that I would like to like work on within myself is that like what you said earlier, when, when something happens and the reaction that I have, like I can control it. And right now I go for every, every time something like this happens, I automatically shift to the worst is happening when it's really not. And it's a knee jerk reaction of going or of, it's more so word vomit. And mm -hmm. then it's like, I, I sit there and I keep thinking about it and keep thinking about it and keep thinking about it and giving it the space in my head, the situation, the space in my head that I don't need to. And then I sit there and stew and stew and stew on it until I'm like back into this, like self I don't want to say hatred, but it's not like I don't like myself, <laughs> you know, right. like I just the way I react to those things and I harp on it and I harp on it, I harp on it. And I, you can ask my mother since I don't even know how old I have always struggled with like letting go of the things that one are out of my control and two mm. that are taking up space in my mind that don't right. need to. And I still am like the worst about it. <laughs> We've talked about that. Don't let it take up real estate in your brain. Right. Because they ain't, whoever you're thinking about is not paying for it. <laughs> right. Exactly. And so we're the only ones paying for it and suffering for it. So. Right. Exactly. And it's that space in your mind that you could be using to to push yourself forward. And yeah, that's something that I struggle with for sure. Yeah. Um, but I was going to ask you, like, what is your like, what's what's your routine when it comes to that sort of hmm. like you understand when when something like this happens, when you feel that you might be doubting yourself? What is your process to kind of like smack yourself in the face and say, snap out of it? categorizing myself in like that negative space or in um in like with that level of doubt then i just ask myself is that true right is that true is that not true and that's the that's the thing that i've had to do over and over and over and over mm -hmm. like because it'll drive you nuts um especially if it's something that is triggering an emotion so if something yeah. happens doesn't doesn't work out and it's triggering emotion then i have to say okay is is that really true nope here's the situation okay is there a mm -hmm. problem that i can solve but i have to walk myself through the process of then like you almost have to go all right stop and then ask yourself the questions like is that really true about my, right. like the thing are the things that I'm saying about me really true? And because you, we're the worst, we're the worst critics of ourselves. And sometimes it might say, Hey, I'm thinking this about myself. And you go to somebody that you care about and say, and say, and they, and they might have to just be like, no, like you're not like that at all. Well, something that's, and I do that with Cole. I'm like, Cole, I'm so fat. You know, like if I'm having like, I'm struggling mentally about my weight right now. Mm -hmm. I look like, I've said it to him multiple times. I'm like, I'm fat. I'm so fat. And it's just like a careless like saying, you know, but he's like, at this point he goes, okay, if that's what you think about yourself, that's what it's going to be. He goes, that's obviously not true. But if that's what you're thinking about yourself, that's what it's going to be. Right. And that makes me go, oh shit. Like, 
oh, maybe I should not do that. You know? Yeah. Whether it's a joke or not. He's right. and he goes that's that's the thing with with couples too is like do not joke about breaking up or divorce or else it is going to happen right you know like it's just you just don't joke about it it's not even a subject you don't even think about it so it goes in a lot of different aspects it's not just it, it, it's everything everything yeah. you do everything you think everything you say yeah like there are certain things that yeah you, sp you speak it into existence um but that's the i can definitely see that from that perspective of like you got to think of yourself and it's hard because if reality is bothering you, then you got to think about how can I change reality? Right. And again, is it based on your standards or someone else's? Because if it's based on someone else's standards or something that you perceive is someone else's standards, mm -hmm. then you're just going to be dis disappointed, especially when right. it's something really personal. It'd be, it's different if you're in a work environment and there are legitimate standards of your position, standards mm -hmm. of your work. You have to meet your standards, but there's going to be something go like that goes wrong. There's going to be something that gets messed up and you can't look at that one instance and say now all of my other work must be crap like because it can sneak in there and before you know it it does affect performance but if right. it's something very very personal to you like you talked about appearance or something like that then it's a slippery slope of what you say about yourself can start to become become reality and you won't be motivated to change if it's if you're really unhappy with where you are right so, so it has to be based on your standards of what you want and not something that's someone else's standards put upon you you right it hell and and again it's it's already hard enough like managing and navigating through like home life work life and you know if, if you're trying to live up to somebody else's standard that you're imagining what the standard is and it's not communicated the like mm -hmm. what their standard then you're just making yourself miserable and that's right. those things you're like just get over get over yourself <laughs> Right. Yeah. I've, I struggle with that the most. My, like, like I said, my mom has said, it. I can't tell you how many times it's get over yourself. You're right. the only one that's, that's upset with yourself or you're the only one that's making yourself feel this way. Stop. Yeah. I can't really think of an instance where like I thought higher of myself than what I was really doing where someone mm -hmm. just like, mm get over yourself like that's you're not as great as you think you are so no. um because i'm always i'm always like the plan for the and that's another thing i gotta try to not be not be in that mindset of it's like if you always plan for the worst and hope for the best you'll like never be disappointed or something like that or it's like you always expect something bad to happen but again if you're thinking about it then it's typically that's what's gonna happen <laughs> right exactly so yeah. and it but it's also hard to like get yourself it takes a lot of work to get yourself out out of that you know because while you think you're protecting yourself you're really being your own worst enemy right thinking the worst is going to happen like you said is going to manifest that thinking the worst is going to happen and trying to come up with a plan as to why it's like how to fix it before it happens right but also you want to yep. manifest that i'm not going to need that backup plan that it's going to go and be executed how i wanted right. it to that's one of those things that i did learn through coaching that it's and it's totally a mindset thing that if you're if you're too focused on what if and the backup plan you're never going to be fully committed to the actual plan right so it's like if you have a plan if you have a plan b it means you don't mm -hmm. believe in plan a right there should always be just a plan a right there's no plan b there's course correction if it's not going the direction that you want to but if your brain if you even allow your brain to think well what's plan b i don't have a plan b plan a like plan a is going to work and that's Right. Like, will it work this way? It may or may not. So will I have to fix how I'm doing it? I might, but plan A is the plan. Right. So that's the, that's one thing that's, I don't know if that correlates as, as well, but, um, but just from a mindset and growth standpoint, if you're thinking of the, the what ifs all the time, or I'm not good enough, like you will never be all in on plan A. Right. Right. So, so what is, what is then a time where you've like, you feel accomplished, like you've beat that self doubt? Like what is um i've i always get that from learning a new skill there have been plenty of people who've told me in the past that i oh, you're not meant to do that you're not designed to do that like you're, right your makeup is not for that thing i do it's not like you're telling me that i i can't be an olympic athlete well no i'm not in shape to be an olympic athlete but like it, it's it's it was even littler shit where i'm like almost to the point where i'm like fuck you i can i can do that right um but you have to get out of outside of listening to that shit where like that's the that's the that's fucking poor leadership if someone's mm -hmm. like you're you're meant to be in this box 
you are supposed to be put in this box where if you don't discuss with other people on your team what they really desire and what gets them excited, you're actually being a really shitty leader by saying right. you can only ever do this. Right. And so I always got that. It was a bit of a challenge of somebody. If if it me telling myself that I couldn't do it was typically harder on me than some than someone else. So if I ever, the thing that helped me get over that is where I started disagreeing. Like I just started disagreeing. So if somebody else came to me and said, uh, or I'd like to do this. No, you can't. No, you can't do that. You're not meant to do that. I'm like, mm, I'm going to try it anyway. And then once you start to see, hey, like I'm just, even if it's something small, mm -hmm. like where I told myself I couldn't do it and then I did it. And mm -hmm. then I, and I told myself I couldn't do it, but then I did it anyway. And sometimes you have to just, it's more of the, the suck it up and power through it um, right. to see what happens. I think I, I kind of live for the challenge sometimes of, well, let's just see what happens. All right. Well, let's just see what happens. Like this All is right. the positive outcome. Let's see what happens. Well, let's, okay. So <laughs> something that I kept saying during this whole move this makes me think of my move to texas right cole and i moved in after dating for six months mm -hmm. i had family that severely doubted that it was the good idea and i think in my heart it was the best decision i could have made for me but during this process and i still don't think it's the best decision i could have made for me but during the process of the move i had people telling me that it was never going to work out and how dare i bring a kid into this and how dare cole and i even think this was a smart idea and you know basically like you'll never make it kind yeah. of deal and from then i'm like i am going to make this the best experience for me ever and do you remember what i told you mm. like so you had all <laughs> so, i mean like this was i remember that conversation because i'm like those people don't pay your fucking bills right they don't they don't pay your bills yes, i remember this now and okay. you know like they they don't you're 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 young but you're grown right so you're the most independent out of i mean i don't i don't know them all that well but like a couple like you're more independent than a couple of your siblings yeah and you're and at the end of the day when people say shit like that to you it's because of their own self-limiting beliefs they they don't know what like if they can't envision them doing it then it's stupid if someone else is doing it and fuck right that. Fuck that. You can think it's stupid all day long, but if I think it's good for me, it's good for me. And at the end of the day, you like Cole has a kid. Like you were full on going into that, but that that reflects on his decisions on whether or not a kid's brought into it. Not right. Your, not yours. And the one right. I remember sitting there telling you, and I'm like, you know what? You're young. You should move. You have the opportunity to work from anywhere. And what's the worst that could happen? You move back. That's it. You move <laughs> back. That was it. Yeah. And that, and I'm like, and when you said, so do you think this is a good idea? I'm like, it's an idea it's that would idea. <laughs> it's an idea that would work. So, but that's what I, right. I said. I go, what's the worst that could happen? I right. mean, you move back. All right. Exactly. And that's the thing that's like, no, I don't one's, know. Gonna, no one's gonna die. The world's right. gonna end. Right. It, it's it, not it, like it's, I'm here going off to get it would be sad if a relationship ended. Like that's always right. Sad. No one's Happy, rooting like no one's rooting yeah. for, you know, no one's rooting for a relate someone's relationship to end. However, if it did, what's the worst that could happen? Oh, but what I was going to say is like having all that self-doubt, having people telling me, you know, this is never going to work. And, you know, there were some people that were just like, you know, good for you. Sad to see you go. But like, if this is what you need to do, do it. Right. But there was something that I feel like was a sign for me. I follow this Instagram page called Law of Attraction, and it's a very like positive like mindset. Right. You know, different perspective on how you should think. And there was a quote that they posted that was like, what if everything does work out the way it was supposed to? Yeah. Well, it is better than you could have imagined. And right. that's something that I held on to during that whole process was like, I had all, I, you know, I had some people telling me, you know, what if it doesn't work out? What are you going to do? What if it doesn't work out? What are you going to do? What if it doesn't work out? And I'm going, well, what if it does work out? But it's yeah. better than I expected it to be. And so far it's worked out and it's better yeah. than I expected it to that, be. That's that whole thing of not like, if you're thinking of, all of the if you're thinking of all of the things that could go wrong you're never going to be focused on making it right right you're never exactly. going to focus on making it right exactly and that's something like if i could give any words of encouragement through this whole self-doubt thing if i like truly doubted myself through this i wouldn't have moved to texas i wouldn't have you know stayed in the relationship with cole it would have been right. not doubt of the relationship but it would have been doubt of myself as far as can i handle this because i know cole was capable of handling it right and it right. took both of us but for anybody listening that's like has a big decision on their plate to make and they it's something that they truly want and you have people in your life that are telling you 
Maybe it's not in your best interest. They don't know your best interest like you know your best interest. So like, keep in mind, what if it does work out? And think about that instead of putting in your mind, what if it doesn't work out? Like that backup plan, mm-hmm. like we're saying, the plan B, what if it doesn't work right. out? What are you going to do? Well, what if it does work out? I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing, which yeah. was go through with the decision that I made. Exactly. So to start to shift the mindset, like I feel like in decisions like that and big decisions and in um, topics, you know, like I could s- sit here and say about losing weight. What if it does, what if I do lose the weight instead of what if I don't lose the weight? What am I going to do? Am I going to just be fat and sad? Cassie, yeah. you know, right. like, no, what if I do lose the weight? Yep. What am I going to accomplish? Oh my God, I'm going to have all this confidence and I'm going right. to um, have just that strength within myself. You know, like, what if, what if I create the most successful company, blah, 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 blah. What if it does work out? What am I going to do? How will I react? Yep. Well, so, if, if people focused more on what it would look like when, as opposed right. to what it would look like if. And that's something um, I, like even, and to bring it back up, sorry, I cut you off a little bit, but Cole says, you know, when he's talking about future plans for not only himself, but, you know, for us as a family, it's like when we live here or when we have this or when we achieve this, it's never a if we do, it's It's when when we do. Yep. And that's how he always, he always, 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 and I admire it so much because I am so quick to go if, 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 never win, 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 and have that confidence in what I'm saying Mm -hmm. and that manifestation. Well, that gets you to that place of having an abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, um, there's like, and they teach this in the coaching world, there's scarcity, which Mm -hmm. is the what if, what if, what if I can't, and I can't, I can't, I can't. And then you get to the, the abundance where you start talking about, I can, I will. And the, the you right. start to manifest it. And then you get to that place of prosperity where it's like, I did and I will continue to do. But and but that's that whole the 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 more of the abundance mindset you can get into, that's the quicker you will get there. Right. hundred percent the quicker that you will get there. Right. And for for anybody listening who like like you had ta- like you had mentioned, I hate I hate saying this because it's a it's a cheesy thing, but whether or not you think you can or you can't, you're right. Right. The only person that can change that is you. So there's, there's definitely, you could have some outside obstacles Mm -hmm. that are causing you to maybe be stuck where you are, but for the most part, it's, it's mental. It's usually 90% mental. Right. And it, like working out is usually 90% mental and 10% actually work. And I know. And that blows my mind, but also it's like, it's not just waking up and saying it like, I'm going to work out today, right? Yep. Because I have that goal of losing weight. I'm going to work out today. And then the day goes on. I'm like, meh. It's having the consistency to go, I'm going to work out today. If I haven't worked out yet, I'm going to work out today. And not going, well, I haven't worked out yet. That, you know, we're right. already saying that first part, which is I haven't worked out. I'm going to work out today. I'm going to work out today. I'm going to work out today. And like, it not only you know, encourages you to do it. It just makes that a priority. Right. And that's, yeah, something that's huge within, you know, whether you have all your business stuff down and you're, you've manifested that and that's something that you're good at, but you want to change something, you know, you have the power to. Oh, a hundred percent. Well, do you think every business owner knows what the fuck they're doing? No. No, but that's no. where I also get scared because I'm like, it, and it's okay. But here, here's <laughs> thing, here's resources. There, like, there, there's not a single, there's not a single business owner who starts out in a small business and they're like, yep, I got a, I got a perfect plan. I've learned, I've watched everything that Elon Musk has done, and mm-hmm. he's a bazillionaire. I mean, so I'm gonna do exactly. No, like you jump into something because of a passion, right? And then when you can monetize it, it turns into a business, right? And from there, you fucking learn the aspects that you need. Need to learn to be a responsible business owner or you start to hire the people around you like you don't have to be the smartest person you don't have right. to be the end the, you're not the end all be all like it doesn't work that way right. like there you have to have like surround yourself with the right people and there are going to be instances depending on your type of business that you're not going to be the expert on a particular aspect of your business and mm-hmm. that, and that's okay if you're a solo entrepreneur you know if you're a solo entrepreneur if you run a really small business and you're very hands-on then you have to know just the basics but you don't have to know you don't have to know everything right away right like the the market's going to change technology's going to change the biggest the biggest thing and this goes right into what we're talking about here from a mindset standpoint is adaptability mm-hmm. the, the 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 most successful people are going to be adaptable they're right adapt to things that change they're not going to be like whoa the 
Do you think all of the real estate agents, I mean, I'm, pr I'm sure there's some out there that are all sitting around going, well, I'm just going to sit back and not do anything because this bubble's about to burst. No. The ones that are like, hey, I, if I survive 2008, I'm just going to keep fucking moving forward. Right. And the, and the ones who didn't, you know, maybe they're too young and, you know, they're, they're newer to the market. They may not have lived through 2008. They'll figure it out. It's just like business owners who had to, to, to go through COVID. Like there were some that were probably affected harder by not being able to be open, but there were some that's just like, I'll adapt. My you parents see the were shut down for three and a half months. And it was never, never a thought out there of what if we don't make it out of this. Yeah. It's going, we're going to make it out of this. We'll we'll just see what's when. left, but we're going to make it out of this. Right. And in that instance, it's yeah. just like, it's when we make it out of it, not if we and make it's, it out of it. And it's scary because it feels like a huge gamble. Well, that's never happened. And that's never happened in history. So of right. course it was unprecedented. But and, but here's the thing. If you, the, the companies who who made it um and you know a lot of them did there were some that shut mm -hmm. their doors but if you have the ability to to become incredibly versatile mobile and adaptable you're going to be fine and usually the adaptability like if, if you are if you are not an adaptable person you have an issue a mindset issue with self doubt like adaptability is something that's it takes it takes some practice but if you are a person resistant to change and again all of these things can be changed like you people can change it's all about it's all about how you view it and it's all about your mindset so if you're wanting to constantly be in that place of a growth mindset you got to get over yourself and you've got to adapt right so and it's not just a how and it's not just an action that you take like i get i get that you know adapt is a fucking verb but adaptability mm -hmm. is a, is a state of being Right. So becoming that is something that takes a lot of practice. Right. But it's one of the things that's the that I've always felt is the most worth it because I've been an instant I've been in um I've been in that situation where being involved in a company where things change every seems like every 90 days and change isn't necessarily a bad thing there's a difference with change of like hey this isn't working let's throw something on the wall over here and see if this sticks that can become taxing frustrating or it can become exhausting right so the, the choice that that i decided to make is if i need to be adaptable and course correct and change things and throw things against the wall it's going to be based on my decision not someone else's right so um and i had just gotten to the point where I was adaptable. Like I was probably the most adaptable person who, uh, you know, that was, that worked in that situation, worked in that environment. And that's part of, I, I enjoy some, I enjoy some of that, but I have like, but what could prevent me from being really, really good at that is when I get in my own way. Well, thank you for joining us on this fine episode of fuck your podcast. By the time you hear this, it'll be Friday. Um, and if you have a topic that you want to hear, or if you want to contact us, ask us any questions, comments, concerns, write in, look for looking for advice or any of that good stuff, you can email me at Emma at 99 Creatives, or you can email Katie at Katie at 99 Creatives. And as always, you can follow us on Instagram at F underscore underscore K your pod. Um, and you can also write us in there because we're in charge of that account. So we see it all. Right. But anyway, um, just remember, what if it goes right? What if it goes the way it was supposed to? It was better than you expected. So just do the damn thing. <laughs> okay. And get over yourself. And get, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>